Hello and welcome to another episode of SoFly. It is uh, the end of January. And we're back recording another episode. And this time, um, we're going to be talking about something quite warm for the season uh, because it's winter and, uh, you know, we're we're thinking about summer days ahead and, and warm times ahead. But, of course, we've got myself, Mitch. We've got Aldo. Hello, everybody. And we've got Yilma. Hello, everyone. And uh, we've got uh, a friend on the show who uh, we've had on before, and we've gone fishing with many times, and uh, he is going to uh, bestow us with all kinds of fishy bass knowledge today. We've got Matt Martin on the show from Smooth River Guiding Co. Matt, how's it going? Hey, thanks. Yeah, I'll do my best to spread some knowledge. We'll see. You guys know a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, Matt, not as much as you, man. (laughs) Yeah, man. Yeah, no, we're uh, we're excited to chat about bass because, um, you know, like I was saying, it's winter, and and of course, you know, last year, I think you discovered and, you know, you guys all went out on the bass flats, mm-hmm. um, which is a really unique sort of smallmouth fishing day. And, um, you know, we touched on it a little bit last year, but we want to talk more today about kind of, um, you know, we, we don't really typically get super educational on the show. We don't really dive into like techniques and how to's. It's kind of always been like a point of SoFly, but like, we just want to like try one, you know, and, and I think. This is the time to do it, the winter when we're all just, like, mm-hmm. dreaming about fishing, you know? Like, we could talk about days on the water from a, from a more philosophical, fun standpoint. But there's also something to be said about, like, talking about technique when you're sitting <laughs> in a cold office with snow outside. You know what I mean? We're deep diving and daydreaming at the same time. Exactly. It's, it's, a, ba- it's a bassy deep dive today. But, deep um, dive, daydream. It's a BDD. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I still think Double it's something D's. super unique for, I mean, you know, Yilma and I joined yeah. Matt last year. Mitch, unfortunately, you weren't able to join us. Yeah. But, you know, we, 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 I, I've never fished like this before for bass. And, like, you know, Georgian Bay, whoever's familiar with Georgian Bay is crystal clear waters. And, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, you know, we were walking and wading flats. I mean, we mm-hmm. were in waders because the water's cold, so it's not exactly like the tropics. But, like, yeah. it from like a you know from an approach technique it's pretty much pretty similar i mean yeah. obviously bass are different than bonefish or snook or something but you know the approach is the same georgia bay from the view of a drone looks like a f- pretty <laughs> cool you know like yeah. you know we'll, we'll we'll be sure to you know while we promote this episode to toss up more images from our time this summer but like yeah like georgia bay from the skies fucking beautiful like yeah. Sky blue water, crystal clear, rocky mm-hmm. hard bottom, easy to wade. So yeah, it's so stoked. Like it was definitely one of my more favorite, if not my favorite outing this summer. Well, so yeah, I'm, man. that's amazing. I'm, I mean, uh, bass so fishing's I'm, I'm awesome. Stoked to talk about it. I think more <laughs> anglers are getting more into it. You know, bass mm-hmm. fishing over the years, and uh, mm-hmm. um, it's like I don't know why you wouldn't. It's it's awesome. So we're definitely gonna talk about that. But before cool. we get into that stuff, maybe like just a little catch up with Matt. Like Matt, how's it going? How's your guidance season? Has been extended here. It's been like yeah. warm, you know. Yeah, it's it's been great. I mean, it, first off, it's kind of funny. I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk, and I'm like, oh yeah, wait, I'm actually in this one. I got to talk to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just like listening to you guys banter. Uh, so yeah, pinch me or uh, you know poke me if I'm not talking enough. Um, man, yeah, no, shit, man. man. Like the season was great. You know, we had an extremely uh, long season this year. It started off early with an early melt. And, Steelheading was great. Trout fishing was awesome. Bass was yeah. fantastic. Um, fall steelhead, you know, we, we cram our calendars so full just to squeeze in as many days as possible, knowing there's going to be blowouts and knowing that, you know, from a guide's perspective, like your days on the water are kind of numbered just due to high flows and intermittency. Mm-hmm. So you overbook, right? Um, you book seven days a week with the anticipation yeah. of a few of them getting canceled. It didn't yeah. happen this year. It was just low water all year. So we had... You know, I think we were, I was sitting at like my longest stretch was like 50 something days in a row, right? Like wow. was, of, of rolling a drift boat. <laughs> it was, it was amazing because we really got to learn to pattern the fish, but was it ever exhausting? Um, oh man, I bet. Right? And I've been looking forward, you know, to, you know, slower, slower January and, uh, and winter overall. And we had a really, really solid freeze up in mid December, everything locked up. And then uh, yeah. we're like, okay, the season's kind of over. We're like talking about rescheduling days and. Uh, and, and playing days by year uh, and then all of a sudden it opened up and it's been good ever since so it hasn't really been much of a break 
Um, <laughs> uh, and, and I've got this never ending list of uh, commission flies that I'm tying that are piling All up right. and trying to get those yeah. out the door. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's good to be busy. Uh, and here I am, you know, complaining about being too busy. Um, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's, uh, it's good no, it's to see good. it almost over. <laughs> um, so I'm out tomorrow yeah. <laughs> and then Wednesday and then, uh, and then I think I'm off the rest of the week cause it gets cold again. Nice. But well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not so much complaining. It's just about like you were planning on having this being a slow period to tie yeah. flies and, and yeah. catch up on probably, I'm assuming some administrative work and also just For hang sure. out with your kid. Kid, yeah. your wife. Get my, get my taxes oh, organized, man. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you we know, got a lot. Yeah, it's a yeah, lot. But, yeah. Uh, but exactly. surprise, you're guiding. <laughs> you're booked. <Exactly. laughs> so, the fish hey, don't not, care. The fish don't care. They're biting. It's been yeah. awesome. We've had some crazy number of days, just some good days on the water. Uh, it's been cold in the mornings, but, you know, by 9 o'clock, it's above freezing. We're not chipping ice off the guides anymore, and uh, yeah. and we're, we're catching fish. So, you know, if you can't ice fish right now, well, you can, but like most lakes, you can't. Um, yeah, yeah. Might as well go steelheading. So, oh hell, hell yeah, right? Hell yeah. yeah, so it's been awesome. Uh, I guess that all wraps up, and is it was a fantastic year. That's great. That's really good, good, man. Yeah, it's awesome to to hear that because uh, and this yeah, year we, we, we got out for we got out for a day on the water. And it was we awesome. did, oh, yeah, we got out there fun, in man. December, right? Um, yeah, third day of steelheading, pretty cold to start. Got some fish in the boat, warmed us up yeah. pretty quick. John Cliff yeah. with an awesome shore lunch. Yeah, uh, fried was, walleye sandwiches. That was, fried weird, walleye. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That was awesome. I'm like, was I've awesome. never had a client cook for me before, but I'm okay with this. <laughs> all, I re- all I remember yeah, from like, I can't get used to that, you know? All I can yeah. remember from that day was him getting the stove started, and then he's like, you know, I'm going to go fish a little bit. And then he makes like three casts and hooks a fish. And yeah. then he's yelling at Mitch to shut the stove off because the oil's about to catch fire. Yeah. <laughs> you could smell the oil boiling over in the, in the river. Well, the oil didn't boil over, let me be clear. But uh, yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was pretty funny. I was uh, quick with the shut off. You were quick yeah. with the shut off, yeah. And then he <laughs> got right back to it. And he is good. Fried that. walleye was wicked. So, yeah, it was awesome, man. Shout out to John sh- Clip. I had an affinity fish. Yeah, yeah yes. shout out to John Affinity. Take a page out of uh, Prince's book and make your clients make you lunch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, what's the sandwich, man? <laughs> I'm like, what? That's the Prince, the Prince tag. Amazing. That's awesome. Amazing. <laughs> All right, yeah, so let's shit. jump in then to today's show because it's going to be, great. like I said, more informative, more educational. Matt, we're going to ask you questions. You're going to just kind of give us the lowdown on what you know and amazing uh, and people people are going to take notes at home and start prepping for bass season because it's right yeah. around the corner yeah right around crack the your notebooks out get your notebooks out you know um you can hit pause you can rewind that's the great thing about this show mm-hmm. uh you can rewind um mm-hmm. but uh yeah why don't we so we're going to be talking about bass on freshwater flats mm-hmm. um why don't we just talk about first you know what are is we... a freshwater flat how do people find freshwater flats like what are we looking for in a lake, you know what I mean? For sure. Uh, so, yeah. Like, oh, also, uh, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, go for it. If you're watching on YouTube, um, you mm-hmm. know, we're going to be talking about flies, lines, and um, yes, and some other stuff. So if you want to see the patterns we're talking about, um, we'll do our best to describe them to, for the audio-only listener. Mm-hmm. But if you want to see them, they're going to be on YouTube. Yeah, we'll be so holding them right call. up to the camera. Sorry, just a little, just a little note. Very aside. good. Sorry to interrupt. No, Very you're good. Aside. You're good. Yeah. So what was, it was uh, how do you identify where do you find them, that kind of stuff? Yeah, what is a freshwater flat? Cool. Like, what does it look like? So, you know? I guess, like, we're stealing that terminology from the saltwater scene, right? So, I mean, technically, we're just yeah. fishing, you know, hard limestone-bottomed areas. They don't have to be hard. You can walk and wade and ankle the knee-deep muck soft bottom if you want to. Um, it's not enjoyable. Um, but, hey, sometimes it's where the fish are. <laughs> so, from my perspective, especially when we're talking bass, um, they are going to, the smallmouth are going to be found in those hard bottomed areas, um, that you can usually, it's as simple as opening up, you know, satellite view online, Google maps, whatever you use, and just looking yeah. at lakes, um, you know, lakes in our area, that's the, the great lakes region. Uh, mm-hmm. a lot of them, uh, you know, happen to be limestone based. I think most of them like South of Muskoka, right? Um, right, right when you get up into that. North of Aurelia, you start seeing the granite poke through, and northern Georgian Bay starts becoming some granite. Mm-hmm. But southern Georgian Bay, all the way to, I don't know, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, is all, you know, limestone-based. Um, yeah. So 
the great thing about limestone is it, it it's not big chunk rock it tends to be long slabs of rock um from when the glaciers retreated or gravel it's kind of the, the two real ways it comes in or maybe maybe chunk rock but not to the degree that granite can be where it's right. big sharp drop-offs um so open up google maps jump on the satellite view and just take a look at lakes um you know i i target lakes that are on the large size so you know most of my spots are going to be found uh, on Ontario's like Western shore, like Lake Huron, uh, through Georgian Bay, um, Northern Lake Ontario, along the Toronto shoreline. Um, there's lots of spots like that. The reason why I want larger bodies of water uh, is there's larger fish. Uh, those those great lakes fish are big. You know they've got amazing mm-hmm. forage. They've got a long growing season, um, and uh, and there's a lot of bait fish. So those those yeah. those invasive gobies, right, or the invasive rusty crayfish. Um, those are right. hot on the menu for those bass and that's what's making them big. I think it was right, just right, right. this fall, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was October, like the new Ontario record smallmouth was caught in on Lake Erie, right? It was like 10 mm-hmm. pounds, yep. 6 ounces or something. Like, yeah. Giant. That's so nuts. Like, that's a big fish, like man. A 10, <laughs> pound, 10 pound smallmouth in, in Canada? Like what? What is going on? Uh, Pretty cool. You know, and, and, and although in, in Yoma, you guys can attest, you know, because you've been there mm-hmm. with me, like, we're not seeing small bass on these flats. Like, they're no. they're all no. 18 inches or better. Um, yeah. It's not a numbers kind of day, usually. There were some days in, in my past three or four years, four years guiding in, in, on the flats, where you're seeing yeah. those double digits, 20 fish days. But, <clears throat> you know, most of them, it's you're going for four to eight bites. And they're yep. all going to be four to six pounds. Like they're, they're big, small. All tanks. So wow. okay. look for those, uh, you know, hard bottomed areas on, on satellite view. They're going to show up as light colored bottoms, um, yep. you know, but that could also show up as sand. So right, I mean, right, to, right, di- right. to digress a little bit, like find a spot on a map, you know, look at Navionics charts, look at bathymetric topo charts, maps. Top, yeah. like, topo maps to see, you know, the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The the gradient change on shore, yep. like if it's super steep mm. hill going into the water, it's probably not going to be a shallow not bay. Right. But if you look up, yeah. like, you know, even um, there's so many free map viewers online for bathymetric maps now. Um, yeah. If you just search, you know, Lake Ontario bathymetric map, you'll find free versions to view on your computer. Um, yeah. And just the best thing to do, as I tell everybody when they're asking me how to find a trout river, how to find bass water, how to find pike days, time on the water, you know, go out there, yep. look at it. Um, take your Just car. Learn, yeah. Don't expect to catch a fish every time. Um, mm-hmm. I know these flats, you know, that I hold close to my heart were ones that I've discovered I, a long time ago. I mean, just doing this, like lots of driving. Yeah. And I was a little, you know, fishing bum before I was in the working as a guide. I was just an addicted angler like we all are. Um, yeah. And I, I found all these little secret spots. And uh, some of them aren't so little. Like some of them are quite large bays, like the, one of the ones yeah. we fished together. Um, you know, you can spend a full eight to ten hours roaming this flat. Um, looking for fish so look online then get out there and just just check it out okay yeah so it sort of sounds like it's a big what you're looking for is just a big kind of like shallow flat mm-hmm. low incline kind of bay mm-hmm. um and specifically what we'll talk about today is great lakes versions sure. of that because yeah. they bring big fish in and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know we've <laughs> fished them so we know that this stuff we're saying actually works yeah but i guess um these kind of like flat areas uh, you can find anywhere they can be sand, they can be rock. Yeah, like and and yeah. and one thing to to make clear too is that like I'm talking about limestone, it doesn't have to be limestone. Like sand yeah, bottoms yeah. are good. Um, like a silty bottom with sparse weed cover is good. The yeah. best thing you can actually find is transition zones. So if you can find where mm. weed goes to sand or where rock goes right. to sand, um, right? The fish are going to yeah. patrol those areas, or you can find like chunk rock. Like some of the rocks we were walking on that day are the size of a small car to a. To an apartment like they're giant <laughs> slabs of rock yeah. and then there's like a two foot drop right to like silty bottom and those bass yeah. are just going to cruise they're going to cruise those edges and they're just going to yeah they're opportunistic right but you know they're not always just lying in wait like everybody thinks of a bass you know you think of them this cottage lake like they're laid up under a tree they're waiting yeah. for something to fall on their head smallmouth they like to cruise they from they're my cruising, experience right? they they will hold if the forage is good and hide behind a rock but yeah from my interactions with these fish is they're just on the move. It, it's, mm-hmm. you know, you're walking slowly and you're waiting to see the fish before you cast, but they just mm-hmm. swim from left to right sometimes before you can even make a cast. Um, but yeah, uh, so definition of a flat, shallow water, doesn't have to be hard bottom, but it helps for walking. And uh, you yeah, know, I yeah. personally don't like fishing deeper than waist, waist deep, um, right. just because it's, it's hard to keep your lineup off the water when you're casting. Yeah. 
Uh, it's hard to see any further than say mm -hmm. 15, 20 feet, unless you're like seven foot tall, like I, this, um, <laughs> or, uh, you know, everyone else is kind of like, where, where, where did that fish? Um, so I Especially try to keep me. it, yeah, <laughs> I try to keep it like knee to the thigh deep. Um, and then that way you actually have a shot at seeing the fish. The other option is, uh, you know, getting out there in your boat, um, and getting into slightly right. deeper water. And that gives you the elevated platform, uh, which, uh, I'll be offering this summer. So we'll be getting out there. Cool. Newly acquired kind of, boat, and almost like pulling the flats. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm debating putting a polling platform on it, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, this is news to me. I'm, nice. Mm -hmm. I could see cool. how, again, just given a perspective, um, like I could see how even if you know, if I'm thinking about the types of places, um, you know, like yeah. off the top of my head, like you know where we went in Georgian Bay, or mm -hmm. I have some friends that have cottages in the um, eastern part of Georgian Bay, like in Point O'Barrel around Perry mm -hmm. Sound and stuff like. Mm -hmm. that. There's a lot of rocky inlets. For that, sure. You know, they might not be expansive flats, but they're you know they're still like 500 square meters, which like oh, yeah. you take up more of a you know. And then I'm also thinking like, oh, you know what, Prince Edward County, that area is full yeah, of it, really great too. Full of it, yeah. And all of these areas, not only they're synonymous with you know, limestone and clear, clear mm -hmm. water and bass, but also synonymous with yuppies and stand-up paddle boards. So I feel yeah. like I feel like from a, from you know even if you were if you didn't own your own stand-up paddle board, a lot of these areas, if you're in Ontario or visiting Ontario, a lot of places to rent stand-up paddle boards, and that just gives you, you know, that much more elevation mm -hmm. to to, yeah. to help spot these fish or even cover water. Definitely, yeah. Paddle boards are, are a great uh, tool for accessing flats that might not you might not be able to walk yeah. to, or you know, there's a lot of the <clears throat> the ones that I that you fish are, are going to be surrounded in private property, so you can't really right. access them from shore. So you might need something to get there, um, to get out, which yeah. is yeah. part of the reason I, I got the boat because now there's access to, to new flats, basically. Mm -hmm. um, right on. Away from you know, I'm, I'm, I've been building this fishery up a little bit over the last few years and, and it's great but i just also need to make sure that i'm getting to untouched waters uh, with clients so for that sure a yeah. Big difference but yeah, yeah that makes no, sense it's awesome okay so this is cool because yeah it's sort of like the type of water i don't know i feel like a lot of anglers maybe overlook because mm -hmm. if you're fishing bass it's sort of like i'm gonna go to the weeds i'm gonna go to that shoal i'm gonna go where there's structure like i know where i'm gonna go and i know what i'm gonna do right, right? But this is sort of like you're active, you're, you're looking for cruising fish, you're walking until you see a fish. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more like that kind of thing versus like, I'm just going to go. More of know, a hunt. Yeah, I'm not stripping 100%. a streamer through this weed bed 15 yeah. times. Like I'm searching. So what kind of gear does one need beyond like the boat? And if they're going to walk, you're saying stay yeah. waist deep, put totally. a rod to bring. All that stuff. So like, yeah, the boat is definitely not necessary. Um, I learned these. I have probably a dozen that I can go to just through a public park or an event right. and, and get in the water and start going, uh, <clears throat> which is great because it keeps costs down for people. It's an, it's a, it's a, it's an activity that anybody can really do as long as you're interested in um, fishing, I should say. Um, but yeah. yeah, for, for gear that's needed, it, it's really not that special. I mean, um, there's some lines that are better suited, like there's plenty of line companies out there that manufacture lines specifically for bass. Um, you know, Rio makes their smallmouth paper, which is fantastic. You mean uh, this yeah, one right that here? One right there. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Uh, it's, it's a good line. You know, it's got a fast forward taper. Um, it's a yeah. little bit loud, uh, because it's got a heavy head. So it lands kind of loud. Um, but yeah. generally speaking, um, if you cast properly, you're not going to spook too many of the fish. You're going to cast beyond them anyways. Um, then, uh, you know, you've got rods. Um, when it comes to rods, I'm a big fan of a nine foot eight weight. Um, I like something a little bit heavier. Um, that, that will allow you to handle these larger than average bass. It, it, you got no problem with a six weight catching them, but if you want to land them quick, um, keep in mind you're in shallow water, so they got nowhere to go but up. Um, right. So the more you can horse them, the, the quicker you get them in the bag. And I do use okay. a net for everyone because trying to lift them, can be a challenge yeah. um and you know trying to manage your rod and line and, and, and your own person <laughs> and then have a fish yeah. like freaking out and trying to keep them wet so um mm -hmm. although bass are pretty tough net's going to be high on the list that i carry with me um, yeah. for for rods to go back on um i really like uh saltwater specific rods something that's a real fast taper um some of the, the fa um, uh, some of the, the dist we're taking distance shots some of our casts are 60 70 feet um but Keep in mind, you don't have to do that. A lot of the time, you can just walk a little closer and probably not spook them. Um, and yeah. I'd say your average shot is somewhere in that 25 to 40 foot range. So even a beginner to intermediate caster can make it happen. Uh, 
and but keep in mind like you probably got a rod that'll do like if you're a fly angler already in ontario and you've got a nine foot six weight yeah go give it give it a shot mm -hmm. um you know just to get out there and try it um you don't need a lot of fancy gear to start bass fishing well that's what sounds so great about it nine foot eight a uh, pair of waders get a net you're good to go mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. i also eight, say like the eight weight too is not yeah. just for maybe landing the fish but you know you are on especially if you're right. doing this thing in the great lakes mm -hmm. there's nothing there's not much stopping the wind no so you, absolutely not. you might be casting into some 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 stronger wind so having that backbone for sure weight i is, i personally is always a good thing exactly <laughs> I, I mean i personally will cancel days or reschedule days if the wind's blowing more than like 30k an hour for most casters unless they're really experienced casting something with lead dumbbell eyes into a 30k headwind you know isn't <laughs> the easiest um no but uh keep in mind too when it's windy you don't have the best sight fishing um opportunities the the chop really breaks it up it's hard to see the fish that's when i just actually fan cast i like you know cast three times on like a pie shape like 10 o'clock 12 o'clock two o'clock and then walk yep. 15 steps and do it again right and until you find yep. them um you, you sight fishing is great but sometimes it's not always an option but yeah eight weights the go-to um for me um that's also, a really interesting well, that casting presentation technique. Super. I mean, we'll touch more on that later. Yeah, but, but also keep in mind, yeah. like, they're not the only fish out there, right? So the cool right. thing about the flats, even in the salt, is you never know what's going to show up. So same thing in the yeah. fresh, right? Like, to sure. Yeah. Let's say we're targeting smallmouth, but like you're going to have shots at, at tailing a predatory carp. You're going to have shots at big gar. You're going to have shots at northern pike. We we caught a muskie last year doing this. Um, you know, like there's, cool. there's so like cool. so much to catch and never mind even freshwater drum, right? Like there's, there's yeah. a ton of fish, big channel cats we've caught. Um, so it's like pretty cool fishery and an eight weight kind of does all of that. Um, yeah. and then uh, the, I guess, you know, when it comes to reels, uh, I'm not really, uh, too with, with bass. I'm never really too worried about my reel as long as it can stand up yeah. to being submerged. Um, you know, cause you're probably going to drop your rod when you land a fish and want to take a picture. Um, rods tend yeah. to float tip up. So if you put your reel down, it's really cool. Like the rods will just kind of float there with the tip in the air. Uh, it's just kind of nice. Uh, your reel yep. will anchor them to the bottom. So a sealed drag's nice just because you're going to be putting it in sediment. Um, you yeah. know, if you're by yourself yeah. and things like that. Um, and, and a drag is great for when you get a carp, but not really necessary for most smallmouth because if you, yeah. um, if you do this enough and you run, I guess we haven't really talked about leaders. But my leaders are redfish leaders. They, they terminate at, at 15 pound, and then I use 12 pound uh, tippet, like two feet of 12 pound tippet. So I, I tend to horse them pretty good. Like I'm not giving these fish much of a break. I think the video we captured last year, there's a sequence of me hooking a fish, and like it's a hard strip set, and you just power them in. Like there's you're not messing yeah. around. Um, don't yeah. give them any line. Just keep stripping, you know, and, and get them over to your net quick. Um, and it's it's. Who loves, I mean, everyone loves a really good hard strip set and then a fish immediately jumps, like it doesn't get much better. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fun. So yeah, it, you know, your standard, you know, heavy trout uh, rod would work or your lightweight saltwater rod. Um, your bonefish setup works great too. Uh, there's yeah, lots yeah, of opportunities yeah. for a bonefish perfect. leader or a, or a redfish line setup would work great too because it's colder water, right? And these cool water lines. Um, yeah, it's, there's so many, so many good things to use. I dig, I dig. Okay, so we know what we're looking for. We're geared up with all the right stuff. But what time, when do I go? What time oh, of year do I go? Such like, a good what question. are the different, what are the seasons of doing this? Such a good question. I mean, the flats in general. Like, Thank the great you. thing about bass is it's, it's kind of pretty long season, right? We're, we're open from, depending on where you are in Ontario, it can be open all year yes. even, right? Um, you know, there are bass, let's be transparent, they are considered an invasive species, like in northern Ontario. A lot of, the lakes uh, east of uh, of Superior are all considered invasive, so they're open all year. Um, so that's always an interesting thing. Um, they're really successful species, so they they tend to. I guess to, to backtrack a little bit, they tend to spawn in late May, early June. So in the yeah. seasons that we are about to access to, so let's talk about you know the, the Great Lakes for the Southern Great Lakes, Georgian Bay, like Huron and stuff. Those those lakes generally open um, the fourth Saturday in June. Uh, yeah. which corresponds with most of the rest of the southern part of the province um, mm -hmm. uh, because they're very, uh, I guess, easily caught when they're in mid-spawn. Um, and if you pull a bass off of its bed, 
um, yeah. during spawn, it's not great for that those those fry that are in there developing. Um, for we've sure, we've talked yeah. about gobies before, right? Those things are nest raiders. They're going to jump in and, and yeah. take take advantage by the time you unhook that fish and let it go. But yeah. um, so it's not great. So yeah, Go you start targeting. They're, they're they're horrible, but like you know, they're the become like they've become like the basis of the food chain almost. Uh, right. In the Great Lakes, everything and, eats and, them and, and stuff like that. Yeah, like I just love them. I love to yeah. hate them. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, uh, late June uh, through mid to late July, I'd say there's about a four week window okay. where the water's four cool weeks. enough uh, that they're still up shallow. And right. before they leave to deep water. And by deep water, they're really not going that deep. It's just too hard to wade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that makes sense. So this I is found, like an early early summer, not even summer yet. This is like, like well, you say, like June 21st, when, right? So yeah. Actually, like yeah, that's summer. summer. Yeah, sorry. Early summer, early, late early spring. Summer, kind of yeah, early summer yeah. into, uh, I guess pretty much early summer. Like it doesn't quite get to like end of July. Um, right. When the water temps done, yeah. get above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, they tend to disappear. I've noticed that. Right. So I've been taking water temperatures the last few years and once it hits about 68 69 they start taking off um, that's probably true for like all the lakes across ontario too mm-hmm. right like you know like i noticed and this is a bit of a side thing we were talking about this yesterday i think although like i noticed that in the mornings up at my family cottage lake which is up near plevna mm-hmm. the bass roll in in the morning mm-hmm. and like at, like when it's dark all night they're probably shallow mm-hmm. eating frogs and whatever as it warms up they go deeper right, right. so it's like i guess that makes sense that <clears throat> yeah in a great lake, you know, the water would stay cold all day until July. And then yeah. it's like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah, it does. It, it is a it is a big heat sink. Like the Great Lakes, you know, Georgian Bay is, is giant. It's like 1.5 mm-hmm. million acres or something. Like it's it's huge. It, wow. um, it just holds the temperature, right? So that ice out is always early April most of the time fully, I would say. Uh, but yeah. the, that cold water, like you'll get in there in May when we start fishing for carp, and it's like, oh, that is freezing. Um, yeah. And yeah, so those temps stay cool for a long time. They don't usually get much above seventy, except for the very back portions of the bays. Um, yeah. So find that cooler yeah. water. Um, one thing I should note too, though, is because the water's cooler, that doesn't mean the bass and the season's open. That doesn't mean the bass are done spawning. So. Um, <laughs> Oh. Keep an eye out for spawning fish. If you see a fish that is like actively descending a nest, like yeah. leave it alone. Uh, at that time <laughs> right. of year, what, what does that look like? It's pretty obvious. So, like, we will fish fish that are just post spawn. So they will be still in the area of nests. And when you're out there, you're gonna identify them. I put photos up on my on my Instagram before and videos about how to identify the spawning nests. Um, and they just look like dinner plate size, maybe garbage can lid size, clear areas of gravel. Um, kind of like yeah. a steelhead red, you know, when you're walking along the river and you can see the red, yeah. um, except they tend to be more oval or like oblong shape. Uh, these are almost yeah. perfectly round. They're light colored bottom because the bass have kept it clean through spawning. And yeah. uh, generally speaking, you will see the young bass. Like it's not hard to see, you know, these half inch fry in mass, oh. right? There's like thousands of them. Um, and then right on top of them will be a, a five pound female or or, 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 a, or a two pound male sitting there guarding the nest. Um, mm, right. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, there's been plenty of times I've been out with, you know, I'm sure there's some uh, past clients that are listening to this where we're like seeing a fish and then I'm like, no, don't, don't cast. Like, let's leave that one alone. Uh, right. It's just the right thing to do. Uh, I want yeah. these fish to, you know, survive and, you know, do their, pass on their genes. So, you know, do your best to not target spawning fish. But there's going to be yeah. a lot of fish that are still in a post-spawn funk, I like to call it, and they're like off the yeah, nest. That's right. There's no nest in the area. Yeah, we've seen a couple like of those. Yeah. Patrolling, like it almost mm-hmm. looks like they're like they will come out, chase your fly, not eat it, and go back to that weed bed mm-hmm. or that like that, right. that that wherever they were sitting, even though there's no nest there. Uh, and mm-hmm. you can throw a fly at them and change your fly and get them to chase it. And it's like yeah. they're just still full of hormones, and they're like still like ah, get away. Mm, they're not actually yeah. on a nest. So sometimes you can capitalize on that, but they can be some of the hardest fish to catch. Um, yeah, you know, exactly. Like you, all and I look at had an it. experience like that, Matt, sorry to interrupt, but in no, uh, please. Al- Algoma, although I, that was my first experience of, right? The member of the bash, totally. it was acting like it was on the red, but it wasn't. Yeah. And it was very difficult to catch, although caught, mm-hmm. but <laughs> eventually. I yeah. seem to remember the day we went out, Yelmo, where you showed up 
And I said, oh, I've been working this fish over there for a bit. Couldn't get it to go. And you go over. You're like, can I use a popper? I'm like, no. They're not oh, going to take a right. popper. And you're like, yeah. the very first cast, the thing smokes a popper. And, 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 <laughs> and like, I'm like That's sitting sick. there starstruck. And then you strip set and it breaks off. And we're like all yeah. standing there like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah. uh, and this bass is like fun. jumping, jumping, jumping and throws the popper yeah. eventually. And it was just like, yeah, yeah. holy yeah. cow. That was that, insane. That happened twice, I think. Like, it you, did, you had, yeah. You, you got two to rise on a popper, which was pretty popper, awesome. Yeah. Maybe we'll get into our, our day a little bit longer, but there are some things I wanted to unpack from what you just totally. said. Totally. Sure, you go for it. First thing, first you mentioned that, like, oh, there's a two-pound male and a, or a five-pound female. Yeah. Um, and excuse any squeaky toys you hear in the background. <laughs> the puppy eating toys. Um, but uh, do you find that the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. Freaky <laughs> timing, man. That was awesome. Nice. Do you find typically, like, pike, like uh, with pike... Um, the females tend to be larger than the males, yeah, the same thing and, and not just because they're full of eggs or or whatever, you know. Yeah, no, the 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 females are are much bigger, right? You know, mm-hmm. they they tend to be the ones that. I mean, that's just what science tells us right now. Um, there are big males out there. Don't get me wrong, but I think, you know, most males kind of peak out around that seventeen inch, eighteen inch mark. Those those twenty cool. inch fish, plus inch fish. You know, our biggest one last year was twenty three. They're wow. They're females. Those things are you know. At this time of year, they're post-spawn, so they're kind of not skinny, but they're not, like, loaded with eggs, and they're not October fat with bait fish, right? So right, they're probably, right. like, a yeah. 20-inch fish is probably going to weigh more, like, four and a half to five pounds versus, like, you know, October, that fish is probably right. like six and a half pounds. Um, totally. Bigger. But, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great point. Yeah, they're generally, uh, the bigger ones are generally females. So, and there's, cool. the big thing about bass is... People harvest them too, right? Like it's a fish that I'm sure we've all seen mm-hmm. on stringers, right? It's not like you go to a, a, a wild trout river and you see too many fish, hopefully, on stringers. Most people know to let them go. Um, but, yep. you know, everything has exceptions. I've seen that. Um, but bass, it, it's funny. Like you, you go down and walk a break while go to, I don't know, anywhere, anywhere, any lake, you've probably seen bass in someone's bucket. And, and I often cringe because a lot of the time, those big fish, people don't realize how actually old they are. Like, there's yeah. studies out there showing that the average age of smallmouth, when they get to full potential, is over 20 years old. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, getting to 18, 19 is nothing. When you think of a brown trout, you know, like an old one's eight years old. Like, that's really old. Yeah. A brook trout, an old one's like three years old. Right? Like, yeah. it's it's crazy. So, bass live a very long time. That's also why they're right. so successful. That is so cool and crazy. And I, I remember I learned that when I was like 20, and mm. I was I caught a bass that was like, it was a big bass, mm-hmm. probably a like five. I think it was five, five and a half. I actually think I weighed it. Jeez. And uh, I realized I was like 20, and I was like, this bass is as old as me. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> my head was exploding. I was like, that's crazy, it's man. It's so trippy. Absolutely <laughs> wild. So they get a lot yeah. of, you know, shade that's thrown their way, but, man, they are a resilient species um, that, yeah. are, that are just so old. So yeah, what I'm cool. saying is don't eat them because they're old. Is Don't eat them because they're full of contaminants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, for real. You know, like yeah. those fish have spent yeah. 20 years eating bait fish and bottom feeding fish like gobies which are just like full of heavy metals so eating yeah. a 20 inch smallmouth that's like eating a probably a tire weight or something in lead um <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. my god <laughs> yeah but also you know they're spawner fish right? they're spawners them, so you know do their thing and, and, and nothing wrong with harvesting fish i don't want to be that person like you know keep keep bass they actually a smallmouth in cold water tastes great um you know uh just uh, try to yeah. try to keep those smaller ones the ones that you know they're not 20 inches passing on awesome genetic material. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my last, that's my little, probably the last time I'll talk about ethics. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Second, the... second question I had was, uh, as Frankie gnaws on my hand, uh, second question <laughs> I have is from what we were talking about before, you know, you're seeing about 70 degrees, you mm-hmm. start seeing them move off the flat. Is there an ideal temperature range where you're like, oh, baby, the water is X, it's going to be on, you know, like, is there a temperature that you, that really like gets you excited? Like, you know, so I they know there's say, definitely temperatures in trout that make us excited. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, it, it can be that way. It's more, I think like day to day conditions, weather, wind, sunlight, cloud cover, uh, that kind of stuff that I get excited about, but <clears throat> temperature range. I mean, they, from research I've done, um, from, uh, you know, just, doing it myself or things that I remember looking through my books in, in, in school, um, in, in college when I studied some studied fisheries, bass tend to spawn at like 62 to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Uh, okay. So I get excited around 65. I know most of the fish are done spawning at that point, um, and uh, and they're they're freaking hungry, right? Like they've gone mm-hmm. a good long time without eating. Just like other fish, they don't actively eat while they're spawning. They will yeah. eat things. They will take gobies and crush them. But I've seen them just like more along the way lines of pushing them, just like get out of here, get out of here, get out. Yeah. Of here. It's not like they're actively opening their mouth on them unless something happens to sit still, like someone's poorly cast card fly that lands on a bass bed um, right get picked up right. immediately uh, and a lot yeah. of them will be picked yeah. up and just moved if you don't set the hook they'll pick it up and then just go drop it which is kind of cool right i guess it's another thing that makes it so special right like it's a fleeting moment in our season mm-hmm. like it's it's also you know the kickoff to our to, to our bass season in many ways yeah. like you know you can that's something you can really start getting excited about is like oh i can you know it's post-spawn um, it's not quite the you know the heat of the summer yet, but it's probably still pretty hot. Like with the day we went out. Like. Yeah, it's scorcher. Yeah, it's scorcher. The, it's it's crazy because the air temps can be in the 30s, but your legs are freezing. <laughs> and, yeah. and like wearing waders is definitely definitely key. Definitely, uh, you <laughs> definitely don't want to wet wade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely not. Um, non Georgian Bay I've, anyway. Like it's cool. No. There are. I mean, I if feel you're shallow, like, you yeah. Can, even though Matt did through. last time. Yeah, I did last time. I got yeah. good calf sunburns, though. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the more you learn about fishing, or the better you get at it, your your year, your season is broken up more and more into those like weeks, moments. Yeah, you know, it's so yeah. true. Where it's like I got two weeks for this very specific bass. I have. I've got two weeks for this bug. We always, and then a month of that. You know what yeah, I mean? I always have this conversation. It's come up more than once with, with our our mutual friend Nick uh, Nick Roman. Um, yeah where it's funny like there's always <laughs> another season and 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 it's like right when you're telling <laughs> your wife or your partner that like okay i just got to get out the season closes this yeah. week yeah but there's yeah. another one coming <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's always another one you're like right? yeah which which season uh, it's it's countless <laughs> like it's endless i, I started awesome. freaking fishing in february last year for steelhead and it's end of january now so it's all year up here right now. yeah uh it's it's <laughs> yeah. never ending but yeah it, it is like you said mitch like there's the shallow water bass season there's the yeah. you know get out in the boat bass season then the rivers really yeah. start to heat up in august right and like yeah, the river exactly. bass kick off and then and then and there's then, poppers and lily pad season exactly like it's, yeah. you know, it's, all, it's, that's it's why wicked love I, yeah. I love them they're such a great species you know that like day a, oh sorry oh they're like the most popular sport fish in North America, right? Like yeah, freshwater yeah, sport yeah. fish, I should say. So yep. I don't know why. I mean, more and more people are becoming, you know, fly curious with it, right? Like, oh, okay, this is actually yeah. fun. But I've had days when we're out steelheading in October with clients that I've had mm-hmm. to, you know, we're having not a tough day, but we've had a couple of fish on or whatever, and we're rowing between spots, and I'm rowing past a log jam, and I'm like, take this clouser and throw it in there. <laughs> and they're like, no, I only want steelhead. And I'm like, why? Like, and then eventually, I'm like, yeah, sure, it, there's steelhead here. They're going to take this clouser. And then, like, a 20-inch smallmouth eats their fly. And they're like, huh, yeah. those things fight pretty good. I'm like, yeah, they're, yeah. they're yeah, a fantastic yeah. fish. Yeah. They're so, especially when they're that big. Exactly. So I'm slowly yeah. transitioning more people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I dig it. You know, that day, uh, how were you geared up? Like, what was your weight underweighter scenario? How did you stay warm and also co- cool at the same time? Um, well, staying cool for Yilma is not hard at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's cool as hell. He showed up like two hours late, Thank and you just very like much. comes out and smacks the fish right away, and it was like, yeah. oh, "This guy's pretty cool." Later, losers. Later, dude. Skateboards away. Yeah. <laughs> Skateboards <laughs> well, he <did> get, away. <laughs> he did get the late part. Right? I love it. Um, yeah. yeah. I show. I I honestly, well, I had two. You know, my full Patagonia waders, and then I had um, my puffy, and then I had two, or just a dry fit um, long sleeve underneath. So then when it got warmer, mm. I took off my puffy, and then I had that on. There you go. Yeah. And I just put it in my backpack, my Eddie backpack, and that was it. Yeah. And I'm not saying the, the names of these things because we're sponsored by any of them. I just, you know. Just... We're actually not sponsored by any of them that you learned. We're not sponsored yeah. by any of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the sponsors right now are like, great, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. Did, you wear, did you wear, like, uh, I think I remember having wool tights on underneath, what were you, I, like the, my smart wools. Me no. Which I did by was them. great at the beginning of the day, <laughs> yeah. and not so great by the afternoon. No, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, that's I, right. I, I just did. I just did. Give me the smart wool. No, I had my compression tights on. <laughs> from yeah. that. 
<laughs> so that's I think that's something <laughs> but because it's important. funny, right? Because like in the morning, you know, it is a bit. Like, I'm chilly is the wrong word, but mm-hmm. when you could, yeah. when you cool. match that with yeah. cooler water, it just naturally keeps you cooler. So, yeah, yeah, if you have a backpack or or something to keep stuff in, I think uh, that would be a recommendation. Right? Yeah, definitely. But it's also it's funny I say that because on the other hand, this can be a very simplistic outing. Oh yeah, <laughs> it yeah, could be definitely. a box of flies in your pocket and a water yeah. bottle. And, and I've done that before in July. And that's it. It's you know? hot in a waterproof fly yeah. box, and away you go. Um, yeah. yeah, it's totally doable. Uh, yeah. Also, keep in mind, like, you don't need to be out there for dawn patrol all the time. And like, I don't think we started that early. Um, you know, you're not starting at sunrise in late June is like 450 around here or something, right? 5 a.m. So mm-hmm. like, you don't have to be out there and you need sun to be able to see. <laughs> so like, yeah, so- getting out there at 9 a.m. Is, is or later, like there's been plenty of days I've started at 11. Um, and you have right. high sun and you can see everywhere. Um, yeah. So keep that in mind. You can, you know, have somewhere to store your layers, or just go out when you're comfortable. It's um... okay. So okay. So we found the flat. Mm-hmm. We're geared up with the right stuff. It's the perfect time of year, and we're out at the right time. Yep. We know not to look for bass on the reds. Mm-hmm. We know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. What are we're, I'm walking into the water? What am I looking for? What does structure look like, awesome. and how do I spot a cruising smallmouth? Awesome. How would I find that? So the great thing is we're fishing limestone flats, which tends to be a light-colored bottom. So <clears throat> the fish will come in one of two shades, it seems. There'll be a green-colored, almost sand-colored bass, which is like a freaking sea in a bonefish. They're so hard to see. Yeah, they're they, camouflage. They blend right in. And you'll just see, on all, um, well, I guess I should say, the other color uh, you will see in the larger fish, especially the big females, they will be dark. Uh, they will be a big, right. pink, almost like a black drop. Like they're they're really dark and they stand out. So those ones are easy to see. But one thing they both have, um, no matter their size and and color phase, is a black trailing edge on their tail. So yeah. like the last half inch of their tail, it follows that angular mark, is always dark. And you can see mm, that quite yeah. well if you just kind of slow down. Um, what I like to do, so to you know, let's start. I got out in the water. We're looking for good structure. I'm looking for mm-hmm. hard bottom with variations to it. So some chunk rock, some boulders, some bulrushes, some sand. And we're going to get out into about calf deep water. We're going to stop and we're going to look left to right a couple times. And then we're going to take five steps. And then we're going to look left to right a couple times and hopefully see one before they see us. Um, the great thing about smallies, as long as you don't drag your feet, you can get pretty close to them before you actually spook them. 20 feet is totally doable. Um, so you're walking along, right? And, oh, okay, we see one. There's one fish, in, one sitting at 50 feet away. You can't quite make that cast. That's pretty standard. We can. I, I'll take the time with my client to point out what I'm looking for. And this is where if you're working with someone, someone that's taller or someone you're just out there with, try to landmark the fish. So you'll be like, see that bull rush? see six feet at three o'clock and then go over and oh there it is yeah right. i see it okay and like i think i've heard you say before um aldo is he might have been something prince said like you must see the fish like yeah. you, or something like that <laughs> like yeah. i've said that every time since like you have to see it before you cast like don't just tell me you've seen it and then just start casting because your fly is going to land right on top of it and spook it so let's It'll spook it yeah. let's work together to actually see the fish so once you see one big thing identify the head um, if you're casting at a fish's tail, it's never a it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's behind the fish, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So figure out which way they're facing the best you can, and then super important is you don't plop the fly bang on their head. We're we're only in a foot and a half to two feet of water, so um, uh, I like to cast pretty far beyond them, maybe a liter length, so you know nine feet or so, because that way um, my leader is nine foot plus three feet of tippet, so I've got a twelve foot leader generally. Um, I've got my fly line on my side of the fish and my fly beyond them. And at no point is the fly line slapping the water on top of them. That's pretty important. Um, yeah. And then it all starts from there. So you're going to read the fish. You're going to like, okay, what happened? Fly hit the water. Is it moving? Is it going for it? Often they'll shoot right for it, right? And just mm-hmm. slow strip until you get tension and then strip set or watch for the eat. Uh, let me know if I'm getting carried away here and going too fast or anything. Too. No, 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 please. Fine. So okay. articulate. Uh, mm. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I try, I try. Uh, so if, if you watch the fish's body language, that's super important. Hmm. If the fish doesn't move on it right away, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is, is usually start slow. I don't want to rip a fly past that fish and sp- risk spooking it. Like if we're talking right. about 
only casting when you see fish. That's usually what I, I'm doing, bass fishing. You might hmm. only get, let's say, two to yeah. three casts per fish you see, and we might only yeah. see 30 fish, right? So you might only yeah. make 90 casts in a day. So maybe, Which is kind of part of the allure of this type of fishing, like yeah. sight fishing. Ex- you're looking for the exactly. fish, and you're like, here's the fish. Let's make, let's do this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you, you know? don't yeah. want to just make a crapshoot of a cast and hope and pray. Like yeah. if you're not a, um, an experienced sight caster, which I would say 80% of my clients aren't, we're going to start in the shallow mm-hmm. water. I'm going to place a rock in the water and we're going to practice mm-hmm. casting at that before we even get into where the fish are. So, well, it just makes me think of how many fish I've spooked over the years, mm-hmm. like not see, like not sight fishing on like lakes, but that's and a, just like a great way to learn casting. You know, I'm just like, man, I probably scared like, every fish you know and, you know and I mean? it's only realistic when you can do it on the right cover because if it's weedy back base and yeah. stuff there's no way you're doing it you're just going to cover water but in these exactly, areas where yeah. you can see them and the population density isn't that heavy like it's not like they're fast everywhere right there's yeah i don't know how many square meters each fish needs but um it's pretty significant yeah. like you know you might only get you might see 30 fish in a day you're not going to catch everyone but yeah. you're going to get usually a couple casts so your first cast should be slow um, a fly that I always like to start out with. Okay, well, one of three flies I like to start with. Um, one here uh, called the the creeper. Uh, ooh, did you, where are we? There we go. It's like ooh. the rubber legged jig of the conventional world, yeah. um, but in a fly, right? So I like that. Uh, this one's in a in a perch pattern. Um, there's that individual I follow online. I'm sure lots of us do. Is, his Instagram is Sven Diesel, and he is yeah. a wicked tire, and he came up with this fly pattern. Um, That's cool. And I asked him questions about it, and he was so gracious to help me out with it. We can't get the, the Creeper Chenille material here, or at least I haven't been able to. So I use a body mm-hmm. of ice dub, yeah. but it mm-hmm. also looks really good, and it works very well. So I'll start yeah. often with this fly, because if you let it sink to the bottom and hop it along the bottom, it's a crayfish. You strip it slowly along the bottom, it's a goby. You strip it fast, it's a baitfish, right? You can, like cover the water with one fly and think about how effective totally. like in conventional fishing a spinnerbait is right like that's one yeah, of exactly. the lures everyone's probably thrown and that's what this can be but it can also yeah. be a tube jig it can be you know a drop shot bait it can be anything yeah right so you can fish it in so many different yeah. ways to mimic different life and yeah. like perch cool. pattern or crayfish pattern or just even like all white like this one just like a bait fish pattern Ooh. deadly mm-hmm. uh the white's great because you can, <laughs> anybody can see it um <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <yeah. laughs> uh, even someone who's not used to sight fishing they can see this fly and when they see it disappear yeah. they know they got a strike um, right right that's, that's so bright white key. so that's like a white similar pattern but bright white it's exact same pattern yellow. just white with chartreuse right. eyes chartreuse light okay, eyes yeah. Yeah. but lead eyes brass yeah. eyes bj whatever you want um but anyways yeah so i digress again um you cast beyond that fish say a liter length yeah you let that fly hit bottom let's say that fish I didn't do anything. It just sat where yeah. it is. Hasn't, hasn't moved. Okay. So yeah. hopefully our cast has been lined up a prop, uh, to allow the fly to work towards the fish. Um, and yeah. it'll come within, mm. I would say, two feet of the fish. Um, we don't need it to get six inches away from them. They've got about a one meter zone, I think. If you can get within that, they're going to probably come and look at it. Yeah. And I'm going to do just a nice slow strip, six inch strip. Like let it hit bottom. Cast, no reaction. Let the fly hit bottom. And then a nice six inch strip with like... <clears throat> a half second pause it's not a quick strip it's not a slow strip but you're keeping it along that bottom it's just bouncing off the rocks ticking all that kind yeah. of good yeah. stuff it's really hard stuff. at this point because you're gonna see these fish react and just like popper fishing a lot of people pull the popper out of the water with a trout set um yeah. you have to feel the fish too so you have to see the fish before you cast and you have to feel the weight of the fish before you strip set and strip set is the only way to do it um uh, uh the right the fly will hit a rock maybe and you might get tension give it a 12 inch strip set or strip you know that can be your strip set a strip set doesn't need to be a three foot pull with your arm it can be just a 12 inch sharp tug and if it right, wasn't especially the, for these fish right? yeah they've got a really hookable mouth right if that's a word yeah. i don't know but you very, know, hookable. It's very hookable it's a hookable mouth <laughs> you know yeah. like it's easy Tar- um, tarpon not so much not so much bass, like, yeah. bass very yeah, hookable. Definitely if hookable. they eat it, it's you're gonna get them hooked. Um, so I give it a 12 inch strip. Yeah. Oh, it's a rock. That's okay. You know, give it a couple pops, it'll pop off. Keep swimming that right. fly towards them. Nothing happens. It goes right past that fish. Doesn't even move. Okay, maybe try that cast again from a different angle. Maybe just change your angle. You know, walk around in a circle slowly, watching the body language of the fish again. Nothing happens. Make another cast. 
let's try a faster strip. Cast it, don't even give it time, just strip, 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 strip. And they'll, that'll often, if one won't take it on the slow strip, they'll come after it when it's moving. It's that cat and mouse kind of reaction we're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll chase it. And don't be surprised if that bass comes after it and is like ready to kiss it and then just moves away. And then it moves back to that rock it was holding on or something like that. And then yeah. you, I think um, we saw it the day we were out. Before you showed up, uh, Yelma, I, I ended up throwing like four different fly patterns at a fish with Aldo was on the camera near me. And I eventually yeah, got cool. that. Like it was just change it up, change it up, and I eventually got to eat this oh. little sculpin right here. Like that's this right, little brown, yeah, 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 yeah. little brown sculpin. That's, that's small, right? Yeah. Like we're talking an inch and a half, two inches. Um, Bring it up a little bit, the cloud. There we go. Yeah, 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 it's a small fly, and it's just got that kind of sculpin head. Sculpin yeah. head, a little bit of uh, rabbit zonker. Is that rabbit? Yeah, rabbit zonker. Yeah, zonker. Calf tail under the belly for the white belly. Um, yeah, rubber legs. A very, you know. a very brown fly. Brown, very brown, brown, not you know, brown, olive, tan. Those are kind of the colors we're looking for for gobies. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I threw a crayfish at it. I threw the the uh, clouser at it, and nothing. They wouldn't take it. And then I threw this at it, and it was the first time it hit bottom. And I stripped it once, and that wow. fish pounced on it. Um, so yeah, change it up. You know, Funny, that's eh? kind of the way yeah. to do it. So yeah, you just kind of keep walking. Um, don't get carried away with walking and casting. People love to do that. You're just going to spook yeah. fish. You're, you're, you're yeah. going to walk, and you're going to place a cast on top of one, and you didn't even Good see point. it. Good mm point. -hmm. So just take yeah. five steps, stop, scan. If you don't see anything, eh, take a couple casts, you know, but, like, make sure, sure. you look first. Because bass, like you mentioned, they will cruise. So sometimes your fly just happens to be in the water as one's moving by, and that vibration of right. those rubber legs or the lead eyes ticking the bottom will mm -hmm. bring one in well, yeah. from a far distance. Like, like an angler fishing a spinnerbait or a crankbait, bass will come from a distance to eat, uh, mm -hmm. especially if they're cruising. So... Yes. Well, that's what most people. That's how most people <laughs> fish bass. Yeah. You, know, you just cast, cast and yeah. wait. Yeah. You know, you reel you and you hope you and you cover water. Yeah. True. yeah, and that's where you have to break that habit with this. It's casting, yeah. watching, really getting Watch, in tune yeah. with your environment, and making sure you're aware of what's going on. Makes sense. Yeah, Makes sense. Um, I feel like cool. so. Yeah, that's kind of the way I approach the situation. Now you say obviously strip set is yeah. the only way to go because if you lift that rod tip and set the hook that way you're because of the leverage your that hook's coming right out it's uh, not gonna stick right two reasons yeah that can be one of them often your fly yep. line is sunk a little bit even with a floating fly line the heavy flies will get right. down so then you're lifting and you don't get a lot of pressure to the fly you get pressure on the line and the angle isn't good right. and you can either apply too much pressure most of the time it's not enough pressure uh and it just kind of bounces off their lip but the main reason is these things are notorious nippers at flies so they'll grab the trailing part of your fly and if you yeah. trout set generally speaking when you trout set that fly is ending up a line distance behind you right it's mm -hmm. like a cast it's your back cast so a strip yeah. set that flies only shooting forward a foot two feet and often oh, they'll right. pounce back on it like they'll rush for it and right. um, oh yeah you might get a second shot that's you know, that's that's so cool. That's I never thought of that. That's 101 saltwater flat way. fishing. Like strip set because a bonefish mm -hmm. will take it three or four times before you get it sometimes. That's that's the reason for the strip. Yeah. Is because and, you it's a second shot at hooking the fish. Exactly. You, you won't pull it away from them. There's, it might just be like, you just oh, keep, it You just here. keep stripping, right? Keep stripping. And you you and, feel like a little tug, and then and just, sooner or exactly. later you're just going to get, yeah. you're gonna get and, the connection, right? I always thought it was just like a leverage thing. It, it is, when, especially so with sinking sense. lines. Like when you're using a sinking line yeah. in 20 feet of water, if you lift vertically on that, you're not doing anything to the fly. There's nothing's happening. To, like the fly's not exactly. moving. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. But like just like they do in the salt, if people are, when I say, okay, set. Um, and they trout set. It's more like strip, 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 long strip, boom, fish on. You know, like eh, cool. tell them to long strip. Okay, I'm going to strip two feet, boom, fish is hooked. Um, mm -hmm. Same kind of scenario. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. saying set to trout anglers always tells them to lift. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, yeah, the yeah, fly yeah, ends exactly. up behind them or in my forehead or something like that. Uh, <laughs> so, like everybody, like that's how yeah. we all learn to set the hook. Yeah, you, exactly. know, you just launch it towards the sky. <laughs> exactly. And it's like yeah, the Bassmaster's yeah, classic. Like, yeah. <laughs> ripping it. <laughs> ripping the head the off of the nine, 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 <laughs> nine treble hooks in your. Exactly. Your yeah. With 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 a fly line doesn't really work that no. way with certain fish, right? Exactly. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Cool. Um. We did just talk about sinking lines and strips. Yeah. Do you ever, would you ever, I mean, again, you're you're on about a 12-foot leader, so, mm -hmm. uh, and you are not so, in very deep water, but is a sink tip ever or like a no, intermediate sink tips, tip? No, but an intermediate line, definitely. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. An intermediate line can be killer because, like, they're often clear yeah. uh, for spooky fish. Uh, an intermediate right. line doesn't show to the fish the same way a bright yellow tip or something can. Um, mm -hmm. 
Excuse me. <coughs> um, I don't have a cough button over here. Got to get that going. Um, no worries. The, uh, yeah, so intermediate line can be good. Uh, most of the time, floating lines are sufficient in water shallower than four feet for anything. Um, you yeah. know, your fly will get down to the depth it needs to be. Um, sinking lines, definitely. Um, if you're fishing later in the season, fishing from a boat, you know, fishing in 20 feet of water, you got to get down. Um, type eight lines, type seven lines, like, you know, six inches per second sink rate, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. count those flies down. But uh, on the flats, no, I don't use a sinking line too much, with the exception of a style of fishing I'm working on that I haven't fully developed, but it worked really good, and, and I don't know how much I can talk about it yet. Uh, but it involves, if you think of booby style fishing for rainbow trout in like a pond, we're using a floating fly yep, and yep. a sinking line. Same mm -hmm. kind of scenario, but for bass. And it's to imitate ah, bait fishing crayfish. It's yeah. spin offs on, uh, <laughs> on the booby, kind of, but also mixing it with a crankbait esque crayfish. It's crazy, yeah. but it works so good. And uh, I'll, I mean, I'll be when you think about, about you it. know, if we think about back to our Rapala days. Mm -hmm. You know, you get those ones that I can't remember what they're called, but like you know, and you've got your Rapala, and it, it lands mm -hmm. and it's floating. Yeah, the floating. And you start ones. the retrieve. Yeah, it dives. It's, yeah. It dives. Yeah, yeah. crankbait. Yeah. yeah, crankbait. So yeah, I yeah. can see. I'm, so uh, yeah, you know, like, it's pretty cool. You can also yeah. you can also do that with like deer hair bugs, like this one here, the fly um, that I've taken a spin off on a loose thread there um, on the Dalberg diver kind of. Uh, if you mm. look at the head, it's kind of similar, but it's more rounded instead of just like a diver head. Um, mm. This yeah. fly, I actually, if you look on the bend of the hook, when I invert it and pull it away, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a ton of lead wire yeah. wrapped around the shank there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe lift that, it just a little bit just for the camera there. Lift it up here. And for everybody on YouTube. Back. Yeah, know, lots of lead it. wire coming right yeah. over. Oh, yeah, we can see it. Bend. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that lead wire is there to allow the fly um, to have a lower center of gravity so when you strip it, it goes like yeah. across and then it rolls and then comes back because the lead wire is going to cause a weight disrupt when you stop your strip. Same thing guys do in trout flies, like big articulate trout flies or musky flies. It comes, <laughs> darts, and then rolls and it flashes that orange belly or white belly at the fish, which mm. really shows like, hey, I'm injured, come eat me. And I fish this right. fly, even though it's got lead wire, it still floats with all that deer hair uh, slowly, mind you, on a sinking line because then that replicates a suspending type of lure. I can hold that fly right in their face. The fly line will be on the bottom, and then this is a foot or two off the bottom, just flashing as it strips through the pool, through the, uh, mm -hmm. through the through the water. Um, and yeah. this is deadly, because it's not quite a Delbert Diver, just the way it's shaped. It's it's also got a rabbit strip tail and marabou, and it's completely right. different. But it is deer hair, and it's trimmed with you know, that kind yeah. of shape. Best it looks like a it. sucker or something. Yeah, yeah, color -wise. yeah, yeah. This is a, a gray and white kind of represent anything kind of bait fish. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I yeah. also tie them in like perch pattern, bluegill pattern. Like they're they're all good. Um, Matt, yeah. remember? Uh, oh my God! Aldo, remind me the name of the gentleman who won the contest. Um, uh, Mara, 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 right? Yeah, oh, the, on the river. Yeah, yeah. First yeah. annual Squirmy Wormy Derby. So <laughs> yep. winner. Oh, and perfect. Yeah. My camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, so go. remember you this? Um, remember this fly? It has yes, sir. something. It does something similar, right? You know, you have to. It kind of. Yeah. You know, you know what it, it's called? It, I don't remember what it's called, what it's called, but it submerges <laughs> and it stay it stays uh, suspending in the water. Remember? It's uh, it's called the Drunken Disorderly by Tommy Lynch. Drunken uh, Disorderly, tire. yes. Yeah. Um, it is to replicate the action of a crankbait or a rapala with a diving lip fished on a sinking line. Yeah, and it has a crazy wide wobble because it's articulated, uh, and mm, he's smacked right. a couple monsters on it. Unfortunately, they mm. didn't make it to the boat, but. Um, yeah, it's a good fly. It's unfortunately uh, for me about a one hour tie, <laughs> so I'm not using it too often. Really? It's got yeah, a lot of because it's just like what so many different materials. Yeah, and maybe like, not what, an what hour. Is this, maybe what makes minutes. this fly? Up? Excuse me. Um, what is this fly? Like if for people listening, what is like explain? Was, you know, I'm explain the. Yeah, go for it, Elmer. No, Matt, explain. Trust me. <laughs> Matt, take it away. <laughs> um, if, I, I, if I remember right, it was designed for. Big buck nasty browns. Um, it looks like a buck that. nasty brown. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. articulated. It's got tons of different material in there. Polar chenille. And, it's got that and flat head. And fl the big thing, the biggest feature of it is the, the forward hook on it and how the hook is bent 30 to 60 degrees, depending on which diving or wobble you uh -huh. want. Uh, and then it's mm. spun to your head and it's shaped like a shovel. And it just dives and wobbles and it's great. Um, but it's, a, cool. it's a tricky tie. It's got a lot of moving parts. 
but it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Big streamer. Yeah, cool. I can dig it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's cool that, uh, yeah, I was saying like that, that persistence kind of paying off that mm-hmm. one on that one fish that you you were working for quite some time. And, you know, to your point, like, yeah, change if, it you up. Don't, if you don't spook it and you do find something they, you know, key in on. Totally. You've got a few chances. This, this isn't like a, a super scary permit or anything, right? So, no, yeah, yeah you, yeah, and you'll have other shots too. Like keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not one yeah. fish you're going to see in a day most days. You're gonna see no, definitely, day. definitely. Yeah. So fly wise, it's like bring a selection yeah. because, like you say, you want to rotate through a sure. whole bunch. Yeah, I mean uh, sure. the good old standard clouds are minnow, uh, chartreuse, silver, yep. white. You can't really go wrong. I always throw peacock curl on the top. A uh, little mm-hmm. added flavor. Uh, I like the way that looks. Yep. Um, I actually got some, hopefully they're coming on the way. Actually, I reached out to Bob Clouser on, on Instagram and he actually responded. Oh. And uh, I'm oh, getting nice. some of his yeah. Clousers tied by him, uh, oh, which nice. is pretty cool. I'm not going to fish them, um, but uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. They're going to sit on my desk. Um, but then even oh, just yeah. like uh, a Marabou, awesome. Marabou leech, like this is really simple, kind of regular Marabou at the back, like a bully bugger, then palmered Marabou at the top. Uh, I can remember one client last year where we had a killer day. And he had this one fish, though, that just wouldn't take anything. And it happened to be, I think, our, my biggest fish of the season. It's like 23 inches. And yeah. it came out three or four times, wouldn't eat. And threw this silly black little leech at it. And it came out and just engulfed it. I'm telling you, man, um, black marabou leeches are right. the goats. They're, they're really Like good. the best fly in the world. They don't catch anything. <laughs> I love those in the world. Stuff, but... Rubber legs. That's on what I got my first fish on. Oh, was yeah. that. oh really? Black oh. marabou leech. Yeah. yeah. And now they're using them. They like, look. At, it, they're alive yeah. in the water. It's crazy. Yeah. Now they're using them. Always amazing. They're even using them yeah. for Atlantic salmon now out on the east coast. Like they've gotten away from some traditional flies wow. and they're fishing leech flies, which is just this basically. Um, yeah. I dig it. And then poppers. You know, Yoma proved point there that you know, like they will take surface flies, <laughs> um, even when oh, I say yeah. they won't. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they take them with reckless abandon sometimes. So a small popper though, uh, don't need anything huge. You had those smaller ones on the top there or bottom. Uh, those look great. Great size. Okay, yeah, that's not a eat. huge popper. That's like a pretty small popper. It's yeah. like something I would think like I would use for like rock yeah, bass exactly. or something. I think the one he got it was that one, but chartreuse, I remember. Yeah, right? it was. Like frog yeah. Yeah. Or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, the, like the diver that. style of poppers. Yeah. Yeah, divers. Yeah, the divers just, yeah. Are good. I know yeah, they're not. Yeah, like get a little diver bit diver. more swimmy, like swimmy action. And yeah. get that, that yeah, nice totally. bulge of water that I, that I really like. And like a totally. mouse trying to swim. Yeah, you can swim them too. Good point, yep. you can Fish that on a know, sinking line. It's great. It's basically the exact yeah, same thing so... that this is, right? So, yeah. yeah. Right. Same kind of head shape and everything. But yeah, so that's that's kind of the approach for when I see a fish. And then it's all about, you know, the, the strip set and fight it out. You know, fight them hard. Don't give them, don't rest them. Just. Keep stripping. Uh, bend that rod to the cork. Um, you know, the, you're running 12 pound test the tip. We're probably not going to break off too many, uh, unless you're Yama. Yeah, um, but, yeah unless uh, you're me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't break off too many all year, and you go out and break off like three that day. I don't know what was yeah. going on. Uh, uh, break off a lot of fish, Yama. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. A few. Maybe. 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 Maybe a couple. Um, he was excited. He was, he so, was excited. so excited. You were strip set. Yeah. I was like, ah, uh, uh, Like, crazy. <laughs> but, but once you get him hooked, Keep them tight. Yeah. Keep that rod bent. I see a lot of people trying to fight them. Like I always say, fight them like they're fighting like a trout. Like they're enjoying the fight and they're angling, and they're like right. taking the pressure off them. Like bend that rod. These fish love to jump, and I fish barbless, Bring barbless them hooks a lot of the time with lead eyes, and they're gonna throw them. So mm-hmm. keep them tight. Yeah. Get them in the net. There you go. Um, you don't need to fish love barbless it. by any means, but I do just because I get hooked a lot. So um, right, not there by myself, but people I fish with. Uh, sometimes when we're talking about hands of the clock, people get them backwards. <laughs> I definitely did closer. that on my most recent trip. I, yeah. I was like, "He's like, what is one o'clock?" I was like, "Oh right, it's this way." <laughs> Point at six. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah that 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 day was super cool because we, you know, we saw a few and like to your point, Matt. Bass aren't the only thing you see out there. I mean, no, not that yeah. I want to divert too much from the bass talk, but. I mean, no, it is talk cool about it. running it's into cool. carp and drum and gar. We, and we literally audience. showed up. And you got a nice guy. Yeah, got a great guy that day. <laughs> a large mouth. We, we walked out on the flat and literally in the first, what, 10 minutes, there was like tailing carp cruising on the flat. That was, was cool. Like, that looked, that was eerily mm-hmm. redfish like. And they were, <laughs> right, they were cool. chasing gobies. Like they weren't spawning fish. Like a lot of people would be like, oh, it's spawning carp when they're shallow splashing, which is true if you see them in May, usually. But when it's like, Early July, or we were there mid-July. Yeah. They were they were pushing gobies around. 
Like, that's so cool. That's cool, man. Carp chasing after gobies. So you cool. throw those same goby flies at them or black leeches. Or, like, they're predatory. They're yeah. not just yeah. like a standard yeah. park pond carp. These these things get big. Like, they're 30 pounds, and they're up there with the bass, too. So the only thing is they're much spookier than the bass and way harder to catch. Yeah. Uh, they're kind of the permit of the water, kind of. For sure. Even the first yeah. year we went out, like, two years ago to fish for carp, I think, like, we showed up. There was carp everywhere, and then we quickly spooked them all. Uh, hmm. And then they were gone. Like, you know, I yeah. guess probably didn't help that there was four people throwing flies at everything that moved. Um, <laughs> but we hooked, we got one, and then unfortunately we forgot our net and we didn't get it in. But, uh, but still, yeah, yep. don't beat yourself up with carp. I have so many people message me, just can't catch one. I'm like, welcome to carp fishing. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just the way it is. So, they're just cool. I mean, it was for, uh, another side yeah. of what throwing the drone up was like, yeah, there were a ton of carp. Mm hmm. I oh, was yeah. like, oh, the... there's a pod. Oh, there's another yeah. pod. There's another pod. Oh, there's a single. There's what? two. I was like, oh, there's a fucking shit mode of carp. Exactly. Out. You can see them all while with the yeah. drone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Awesome. That's cool. I'm going to have to lose my phone in yeah. here. It's going to gonna die. Oh, yeah? No, no worries, man. I think... The uh, sound doesn't get too messed up. I mean... I think we've we've kind of like gone through the gambit. I mean, like that sounds like a pretty fun day mm -hmm. on the water to me. Um, damn, yeah, I mean, and, and that's just the flats, right? Like, um, yeah, there's so many there's so many other ways to, to catch bass too. So, uh, yeah, tune in next week when we talk about well, the river bass with Matt Martin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I think yeah, it is. There's so you many. Know, the more we talk about um, an explorer, you know, we really do have something very interesting. Which is the Great Lakes yeah. here in in you know we get to access three Great Lakes from Ontario yeah. you know Erie, Georgia Bay, Huron, Lake Ontario. Look, uh, you know it's cool that we're starting to, you know Matt, you're kind of championing them and and we're we're definitely getting out there a little bit more. I mean, literally we all yeah. live in Toronto, which is on the shores of Lake Ontario, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got yeah. a lot of friends well, that that fish it and they're happy to fish it and you know it's a cool thing to talk about because. It's an amazing fishery. Yeah. It's an amazing ecosystem. It's, yeah, it's a fantastic fishery that is under pressured, underutilized. Um, I, I would definitely like to say I'm, I'm not like the uh, the original. I'm not the originator of this. I do follow a lot of people, but mostly in the states. Like it hasn't caught on here in Canada yet. So um, you know, learning from lots of people that have done it and then putting our spin on it up here um, has made for a fantastic fishery. That like, you know, it's a short yeah. drive, um, and and the fish are big and there's varied species and it's. When else can you, like, I mean, I'm dreaming right now of walking around in a t-shirt in 28 degree yeah. weather and casting at monster smallies. Like, how does that get any better? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah it's a different, it's, um, it's a different approach to bass fishing altogether, which is really, you really cool. You don't need a $150,000 bass boat. That's probably yeah, the most exactly. important thing. <laughs> <laughs> time. Yeah. You can yeah. fish the big water without, you know, big equipment, which is yeah. really cool. And it happens yeah. all the time where you'll be in these back bays and the boats can't get where you are. And they'll just be like sitting there laughing, and be like, "Holy cow!" Like, I had more than one yeah. one occasion last year. A guy rolled up, and he's like, "You guys are smashing them." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, we're in a foot of water. You can't get your boat back there." And it, again, it's only for a short period of time. Two weeks later, they're the ones smashing them. Um, yeah, but like, it's they're always blown away. They first, I had one guy. He, he's like, "I saw fly rods, and I thought you guys were just like." jokers or something out here and then yeah. he's like i saw you leaning in the fish and he's like you're cleaning up i'm like yeah yeah, yeah they, they don't see a fly too often that's the other benefit yeah we know what yeah. we know what we're doing baby yeah so yeah it's a um, wicked fun fishery Let's say that amazing fun i think that's uh something to look forward to for all of us and of course uh matt you're gonna be guiding it how can people go out fishing with you for these bass flats baby yeah so um <laughs> you know you can get in contact with me um uh, I'm really responsive. You can send me a, a message on Instagram, Smooth River Guiding. Um, send me an email, smoothriverguiding at gmail.com, or check out my website, smoothriver.ca. Um, all great ways to get in touch with me. Um, bass days are filling up or almost full up. I think I don't. I don't think I have any weekend dates left um, hmm. for flats bass. Um, there might be an exception here or there, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a short window, so get on it while you can. Um, you know, it is weather, a little bit weather dependent. So being flexible is key. Like, well, you know, if the weather is going to be blowing 50 K an hour, we're just going to reschedule. Um, I'm not going right. to take you out when the conditions aren't at least possible for you to have a great day on the water. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just practice your casting before we go. <laughs> yeah. Get out into a Love city it. park or your backyard or even just a, somewhere and just practice 30 foot cast and accuracy over distance. 
any day. Yeah. yeah. Smart. I got that it. double haul it. going. Yeah. Yeah, get the double haul going. Yeah. Um, well, Matt, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. And, uh, yeah, everybody, hopefully, uh, you know, you enjoyed the bass, the bass chats uh, if you're in Ontario or not. Um, and uh, come on, summer. Let's yeah. go. There's <laughs> enough of this, uh, enough of this winter. What? Uh, yeah. Well, you no, just I'm, me, I know. Winter just like, started. We spent the whole day talking about going ice fishing. We spent the whole day. It is January <laughs> 23rd. Year. But I know you guys aren't. None of you guys are excited about it. You guys are like, come on, let's go open water fishing. No one here wants to talk ice. Come on. I mean, we'll we definitely don't want to talk ice on a fly fishing podcast, but I will say <laughs> that, you know, it is January 23rd. Yeah. I do love what, you know, let's just go. You know, guys, one or two. Some ice season come steelheading. It's still good. <laughs> I, yeah. 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 I love that too. <laughs> is that too? I love There's it. Well, ice yes, in Matt. The river. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, so much. It was so good to chat, man, and good You're to welcome. catch up. And uh, stay toasty out there on the rivers. And uh, yeah, thanks, man. All right. Smooth no River Guy. Thanks, guys. Thanks yep. for the invite. It was a great time chatting with you all. And I can't wait to get back out there with you this summer. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did we do the shameless yeah. plug? Round, round two. Sorry, did we do the shameless plug? These are yeah. shameless plugs. They are right. shameless. Yeah. Yeah. These are shameless, shameless plugs. plugs for like five minutes. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Probably for like 68 minutes. Smooth River River Guiding. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Links in the show. There we go. All that good stuff. Boom. That's it.